In Creo Parametric, you can use the drag tool to test the range of motion of a mechanism. Here I have this backhoe. Let me click on the model and then start dragging. But sometimes you have so many degrees of freedom, it's hard to control and get the kind of motion that you actually want. Let me hit the middle mouse button to undo that drag that I performed. For this reason, you have the constraints tab where you can add in different rules or constraints to the components in your assembly in order to restrict the available motion. Let's start off with the first one in here. This one will align two entities. And if you use Pro Engineer back in the day, you might remember the align constraint. Let me pick this flat surface. Now we'll pick this surface underneath. And now it has taken those two surfaces and made them coplanar and the surface normal vectors pointing in the same direction. So now when I try to test the drag, well, I'm able to move things, but it is keeping those two surfaces in the same plane. So again, it gives me a little bit more control over the range of motion that I am testing. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when you create these different constraints, they are indeed temporary. They're not going to be stored in this dialog box. And as a matter of fact, if I close this dialog box and then go back to the drag tool, well, you can see that there are no constraints on the constraints tab. Again, it's only available while this dialog box is open. But once again, let's select those two surfaces. Let's select the bottom surface here and this particular surface. And so now we have that constraint applied into the model. Once again, we can test the motion and it's keeping them in the same plane. Let me left click to leave it in that particular configuration. You do have the ability to uncheck the constraint so that you can disable it and then go back to moving it around however which way that you want and then left click and if I want to re-enable the constraint I will just check the box again and it will apply it. But let's say that we don't want that constraint in the model anymore. Well here you have an icon that looks like an X and this will allow you to delete the constraint. Right below the align constraint, you have a mate constraint, which is pretty much the opposite of the align. It's gonna have the surface normal vectors point in opposite directions. Okay, so now let's go to the one right below it. The one right below it is the orient constraint. And with the orient constraint, it's going to make two surfaces parallel to each other, but you're not going to control the distance. Oh yeah, one thing to mention when you do a regular constraint like a, a line constraint. Oops, let me select the surfaces that I want. You don't have to have the surfaces be with zero separation between them. You can actually specify a value that you want to use. For example, let me use 20 is a little too small. Let me use a negative value. Let's use a value of negative 100 and hit the enter key. Yeah, just very, very small in this one. Let me try negative 500. There we go. And there you can see how they are moving the surfaces to that specified distance. But once again, let me delete this. Instead, I'm going to use the orient constraint. And with the orient constraint, well, I will pick the same two surfaces and it will just keep them parallel. So now if I try dragging this, you can see that the bucket is staying in the same orientation that it was before, even as I'm moving things around and it's not keeping it coplanar with the surface below it. Let me middle mouse click to get out of that. Then what we have below it, we have the ability to specify a motion axis constraint. So when I click on this, it's going to turn on the display of your motion axes. And in this particular situation, well, right now I have my motion axes displayed in orange and I have an orange model. So it might be a little difficult for you to see them. But here we have a joint axis and I will click on it. And so here we have a value specified. When you have these different joint axis settings that you are going to apply, the different motion axis constraints, it's going to select some surfaces to use as the zero references and then give you the value there. So right now it's saying that those two references that it used for the first 
connection are at a 70 degree angle. I could specify that I want this to be at zero degrees and now it moves it to that location. So if I go to click anywhere on the model, you'll notice that it is not able to rotate around that first connection. Let me hit the middle mouse button and rotate a little bit more. Let me zoom in so you can see model a little bit more detail. Let's try one more of those. Let me go to the motion axis constraint. And this time, which one am I looking for? I'm looking for one right about over here. Again, orange on orange, not the greatest combination. And so for the references that it's selected, it's saying that they are at an angle of negative 56 degrees. Let me change this to a value of negative 90 degrees and hit the enter key. And so there we've got that one applied. Now when I click on this, well, we're getting much more limited motion in the model. And let me, well, middle mouse click to leave it in that orientation. For the next one, I'm going to disable some of these different ones that I applied in here. Let me, let me disable all of them. And so now we will take a look at, I'm going to jump over this one, which allows you to enable or disable cam liftoff. I don't have any cams in this particular mechanism, but again, it does what it says it does. If you have cams, you can allow the cams to lift off from one another or not. You can turn that on or off. But the next one below it is the rigid body constraint. And so with the rigid body constraint, what that'll do is it will lock two things in orientation to each other. So in this case, let me select the bucket itself and I'll hold down the control key and select this arm and click the OK button. So there we have our rigid body constraint. So now when I drag on the model, it is keeping those components locked to each other. Let me middle mouse click and let me click on the actual bucket itself. And so again, as I'm moving this, it is keeping those two locked in orientation to each other. Let me I'll left click to leave it in that particular orientation. And once again, we could go back and re-enable this constraint that allows the plane to plane orientation. For the next one, let me turn these off once more. Let's take a look at the ability to enable or disable connections. And let me zoom into one of the pistons. Let me click on this and I'm gonna grab this joint axis connection here. And so now when we disable that joint axis connection, let me click the OK button to uh, finish selecting. You do have the ability to hold down the control key and select more than one joint axis for disabling. You'll notice as I move it over here, well, now since the connection is disabled, it also disables the constraints. So those two components are no longer connected. But once I uncheck this box for disabling the joint connection, it will re-enable it and allow them to go back to the previous orientation. And if we never want to use that again, like I showed earlier, you can use the delete selected constraints command in order to get rid of it. The very last icon that we have here is to reconnect the model based on constraints only without using the motion axis regeneration values. And so if I click on that, everything is still connected. But when I close this dialog box and then hit the regenerate button, it's going to move the components based to the values that I had specified in the regeneration settings for the actual connections. Uh, for example, let me find one of the components just to show you what that means. Which one do I, does have a connection in here? Let me see, I think this one here has a joint axis setting, so I will click on it and then edit definition. And if I go to the rotation axis, you can see that we have two different surfaces selected here to define the angle, and we have the regeneration value checked to be enabled so that whenever I hit the regenerate button, it's going to go to that negative 90 degrees. But once again, if I go to the drag components and the constraints tab, this button over here will make sure that everything is connected in case they have become separated from one another, but it will not use those different joint axis settings. So there you have it. Those are the different constraints that you have available to you in the drag dialog box.